The World Health Organization, WHO, has refuted the theory that someone can only catch the coronavirus once. The UN agency has warned that recovering from coronavirus may not protect people from reinfection, as the death toll from the pandemic hit more than 200,000 around the globe as at yesterday. In a scientific brief dated April 24, 2020, WHO said the idea that one-time infection can lead to immunity remains unproven and is thus unreliable as a foundation for the next phase of the world's response to the pandemic. Some governments have suggested that the detection of antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, could serve as the basis for an immunity passport or risk-free certificate that would enable individuals to travel or to return to work assuming that they are protected against reinfection, the agency wrote. The World Health Agency said there is no evidence that people who have recovered from COVID-19 and have antibodies are protected from a second infection. The agency said it continues to review the evidence on antibody responses to SARS-CoV-2 infection. Most of these studies show that people who have recovered from infection have antibodies to the virus. However, some of these people have very low levels of neutralizing antibodies in their blood, suggesting that cellular immunity may also be critical for recovery. Concerns are being raised that one possible consequence of efforts to contain COVID-19 could be an increase in deaths from other causes. It's still relatively early in the spread of the pandemic. There will be lags in the reporting of deaths, as well as issues around attributing the causes of death. But could this concern be real? One problem may be that people may not seek care from the NHS, perhaps because they fear contracting COVID-19 or they don't want to burden the NHS at a time when the service is under pressure. An indicator of this is the March data for the numbers of attendances at emergency departments and for all emergency admissions in England. These show a big fall from 2019 to 2020, attendances dropped by 29% and emergency admissions by 23%. What we don't know of course at least not yet is who has stayed away and what happened to them. Many, presumably, will have self-treated or used other services, such as general practice. But these are large falls, and the fear would be that some who didn't attend emergency departments will have died, or may die in the coming months, when timely treatment may have prevented their death. Deliberate delays by hospitals in treating non-COVID patients in order to make capacity to deal with the pandemic will be a particular concern, although data on postponed treatments are not yet available. For the moment, it seems impossible properly to answer concerns about the wider effect current measures might be having on the health of the population. The data are incomplete, too uncertain, and too fast-moving to support any reliable conclusions. The current intense public scrutiny and interest in data on deaths from COVID-19 has exposed even in statistically sophisticated countries such as the UK the difficulties of constructing a comprehensive and consistent picture of the situation as it unfurls from week to week. In the context of a global pandemic and the need for internationally comparative data, the position in many other countries is even worse. The World Health Organization estimates that although 84 countries collect usable data on deaths and cause of death, 81 collect only very low quality data or fail to register deaths at all, with just 6% of African countries collecting cause of death data. When novel coronavirus cases first emerged in India, authorities acted swiftly. They halted public transit, scrambled to stockpile medical gear and ordered more than 1.3 billion residents to stay indoors. Everyone braced for the worst. The fear was that if COVID-19 were to spread through India's densely crowded cities, especially its slums, millions could die. The toll could be much worse than in Europe or the United States, where there are many more doctors and hospitals per capita. But about five weeks later, parts of the country are seeing a dramatic drop in mortality. Funeral directors and ambulance drivers are bewildered. Instead of seeing a deluge of COVID-19 patients, many say their facilities are less crowded. India has counted more than 20,000 active cases of COVID-19 and about 900 deaths though testing has not been widespread.